Hello, girls and boys. Welcome to Unit Ten. I'd like some noodles. This is our first period, Section A, One A to Two D. By the end of this class, you will be able to tell the names of common foods you hear or see, and make conversations about ordering food. Look at the picture. Where are they? Yes, they are in a restaurant, right? But to be more specific, where are they? They are in a Chinese restaurant. Or maybe we can say, they are in a noodle house. Yes, a noodle house is a restaurant where you eat noodles. Yes. So when you go to a noodle house, what kind of noodles would you like? What kind of food would you like in noodles? Now let's see whether you can recognize this food. This is beef. Read after me: beef, chicken, chicken, mutton, mutton, pork, pork. And we also have some vegetables in noodles. These are tomatoes, tomatoes, cabbage. Cabbage, carrots, carrots, potatoes, potatoes, and these are onions, onions, and chilies, chilies. Yes. Okay. Let's learn these words again. Read after me: beef, beef, chicken, chicken, mutton, mutton, pork. Pork, and all these are called meat. Yes, meat. And let's read again: tomatoes, tomatoes, cabbage, cabbage, carrots, carrots, potatoes, potatoes, onions, onions, chilies, chilies, and all these are vegetables, vegetables, vegetables. Yes. Now open your books and turn to page fifty-five. Look at one A. Here's a picture of the noodle house. The noodle house offers three specials. So what does special mean here? Special means a dish or meal given prominence in the restaurant. 特价菜或者特色菜 So first. Let's match the words with the foods in the specials. Okay, now you can pause and do the task. Okay, now let's check the answers. Mutton goes to G, and beef goes to B. Noodles, C. Chicken, D. Cabbage, E, potatoes, F, tomatoes, A, carrots, H. Have you got them all right? So let's get to know the specials. Special one, beef, and tomatoes. This is called. So. It is beef and tomato noodles. What about special two? Here's chicken and cabbage. So special two is chicken and cabbage noodles. And special three contains mutton and potatoes. So it is mutton and potato noodles. So now let's do more practice. Let's move to one B. Listen and check the noodles that the person orders. Section A, Activity One B. Listen and check the noodles that the person orders. What would you like? I'm not sure yet. Are there any vegetables in the beef noodles? Yes. There are some tomatoes. Okay, I'd like the beef noodles, please. 
What kind of noodles does the boy order? He orders beef and tomato noodles, right? That is special one. Correct. Next, let's watch and repeat. What would you like? I'm not sure yet. Are there any vegetables in the beef noodles? Yes, there are some tomatoes. Okay, I'd like the beef noodles, please. Okay, now it's your time to make your own conversation. Please make conversations according to the pictures. You can pause and speak. So this is, what kind of noodles would you like? I'd like beef and tomato noodles. And special too. You can pause and speak. What kind of noodles would you like? I'd like chicken and cabbage noodles. What about special three? Pause and speak. Yes. What kind of noodles would you like? I'd like mutton and potato noodles. As we all know, after we decide what kind of noodles we'd like, we have to choose what size of noodles we would like. So, look at the pictures. The first one is a small bowl, right? The second one is a medium bowl. The third one is a large bowl. Yes. So, when we are asked what size bowl of noodles would you like? We can say like this. I'd like a small bowl of noodles. And maybe you would like to choose the second one. So you will say, I'd like a medium bowl of noodles. And if you're very hungry, you might say, I'd like a large bowl of noodles. Yes, read after me. Small medium, large. Now, a boy and a girl come to the noodle house. Let's listen and find out what they order. Let's turn to page 56. Look at 2A. Listen and check the names of the foods you hear. Section A. Activity 2A. Listen and check the names of the foods you hear. What size would you like? I'd like a large bowl of noodles. And what kind of noodles would you like? I'd like chicken, potato, and cabbage noodles. And how about you? I'd like a medium bowl. What kind would you like? I'd like beef and tomato noodles, please. Now, let's check the answers. Just now we heard noodles, beef, chicken, tomatoes, cabbage, potatoes, and vegetables. Yes, all of the words except mutton. Right. And look at the picture. What size bowl of noodles can you see in the picture? Yes, you can see small, medium, and large. Good. Let's listen again and complete the sentences in 2B. Section A. Activity 2B. Listen again. Complete the sentences. What size would you like? I'd like a large bowl of noodles. And what kind of noodles would you like? I'd like chicken, potato, and cabbage noodles. And how about you? I'd like a medium bowl. What kind would you like? I'd like beef and tomato noodles, please. So the boy says, I'd like a large bowl of noodles. I'd like chicken, potato, and cabbage noodles. And the girl says, I'd like a medium bowl. I'd like beef and tomato noodles, please. Not difficult, right? Good. 
So let's move on. Suppose you are ordering food in the noodle house. Please ask and answer questions. Use the information in two A. Maybe you can ask and answer questions like this: What kind of noodles would you like? I'd like beef noodles, please. What size would you like? I'd like a medium bowl, please. Very polite, right? You can pause and speak. Well, this time, another boy and girl come to a restaurant. Please listen and find out what kind of restaurant they come to and what kind of food they order. Please listen, and you can take notes if necessary. Section A, Activity Two D. Role play the conversation. Good afternoon. May I take your order? Yes. Are there any vegetables in the beef soup? Yes, there are some tomatoes. Okay. We'd like one bowl of beef soup. Sure. What size would you like? Large, please. We'd also like gong bao chicken and some mapo tofu with rice. Okay. One large bowl of beef soup, one gong bao chicken. And one mapo tofu with rice. Yes, that's right. So, what kind of restaurant do they come to? Yes, they come to a Chinese restaurant because typical Chinese foods are offered here. Good. And what kind of food do they order? Yes, they order a beef soup, a gong bao chicken, a mapo tofu. With rice, yes. Now let's listen again and answer the questions. You can pause and read the questions. You can take notes if necessary. Section A, Activity Two D, Role Play the Conversation. Good afternoon. May I take your order? Yes. Are there any vegetables in the beef soup? Yes, there are some tomatoes. Okay, we'd like one bowl of beef soup. Sure. What size would you like? Large, please. We'd also like gong bao chicken and some mapo tofu with rice. Okay, one large bowl of beef soup, one gong bao chicken, and one mapo tofu with rice. Yes, that's right. Now, pause and answer these questions. Question one: Are there any vegetables in the beef soup? Yes, there are. Two: What are in the beef soup? There are some tomatoes in it. Question three: What size of soup would they like? They'd like a large bowl. And question four. What do they order? Yes, they order one large bowl of beef soup, one gong bao chicken, and one mapo tofu with rice. Good job. Let's role play the conversation. Since you are studying alone at home, so we change this task into listen and read after the record. Please pay attention to the intonation. Section A, Activity Two D, Role Play the Conversation. Good afternoon. May I take your order? Yes. Are there any vegetables in the beef soup? Yes, there are some tomatoes. Okay. We'd like one bowl of beef soup. Sure. What size would you like? Large, please. We'd also like gong bao chicken. And some mapo tofu with rice. Okay, one large bowl of beef soup, one gong bao chicken, and one mapo tofu with rice. Yes, that's right. Now it's show time. Imagine you want to order some foods in a Chinese restaurant. What would you like to order? Please make a conversation like this. You can pause and prepare. Okay, here's one possible version. 
Good afternoon. May I take your order? Yes, please. I'd like some noodles. What kind of noodles would you like? I'd like some mutton noodles. Are there any vegetables in it? Yes, there are some onions. What size would you like? I'd like a medium size, and I'd also like a tomato and egg soup. No problem. Please wait a minute. Thanks. How's your version? Is it more interesting? Have you ordered the food you like? I hope so, and good luck to you. Now let's summarize what we learned today. In this class, we have learned some common foods in Chinese restaurants, such as all kinds of noodles and the mapo tofu. And we've also learned some useful expressions for ordering food, such as "would like," "a medium bowl of," and "are there any." Hope this class will help you to order food successfully. And here's your homework: role play 2D with your classmates through WeChat or phone, and finish the exercise on the worksheet. Thank you for listening. Hello, girls and boys. Welcome to the second period of Unit Ten. I'd like some noodles. In this class, we're going to focus on grammar. And by the end of this class, you will be able to sort nouns about food into groups. Use there be any and some correctly, and ask and answer more questions about ordering food. Now let's play a guessing game first. The first one, they are vegetables. They are red, sour, and juicy. Eating them can protect us from the strong sunshine. What are they? Yes, they are tomatoes. Second one, it's a good choice to eat it in hot pot. It is the meat from sheep. Yes, very clear. It is mutton. And the third one, they are made of flour. Chinese people like to eat them on their birthdays. It's a symbol of long life. They are noodles. Very good. Look at these pictures. What are they? Yes, they are some fruits. What kind of fruits would you like? I'd like some apples, bananas, pears, oranges, strawberries. So please read after me: apples, bananas, pears, oranges, strawberries. What are these? Yes. They are vegetables. So, what kind of vegetables would you like? I'd like some tomatoes, potatoes, carrots, onions, and cabbages. So, read after me: tomatoes, potatoes, carrots, onions, and cabbages. Now, what are these? Yeah, they are different kinds of drinks. So, what kind of drink would you like? I'd like some coffee, coffee, milk, milk, orange juice, orange juice, Coke, Coke, green tea, green tea. And what are these? These are some meat. Yes. So, what kind of meat would you like? I'd like some beef, beef, pork, pork, mutton, mutton, 
fish, fish, chicken, chicken. How about these? These are side foods. What kind of side dishes would you like? I'd like some dumplings, dumplings, porridge, porridge, noodles, noodles, rice, rice. So these are very ordinary food we eat every day. Look at these pictures. Can you see the difference between the first line and the second one? Let's see. Here's s, 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 and es. So all these are called countable nouns. So they have plural forms. 这些是可数名词，所以有复数形式。这些加 s 或者 es 的是它们的复数形式。And all the following foods are uncountable nouns. 是不可数名词。So they don't have plural forms. Okay. Let's first see countable nouns. Here are some examples: a strawberry, an apple, a bowl. These are all countable nouns. So we can use a, an, a one before these nouns. And we can also say two bowls or four strawberries. So we can know that we have more than one of these things. We should change these nouns into their plural forms. So how can we change these nouns into plural forms? Here are the rules. Let's look at the first group: apples, bananas, trees, and chairs. So for most of the nouns, we just add s at the end to change them into plural forms. What about the second group? Buses, foxes, brushes, and watches. As for these words, which end up with s, x, sh, ch, we usually add es. What about city and family? City ends up with t and y. Family ends up with l and y. So, as for those words that end up with consonant and y, we usually change y into i and add es. What about the fourth group? Thieves, shelves, wives. So, for these words which end up with f and fe, we usually change f or fe. Into ves, and there is a very special group. Let's look at the words: pianos, radios, photos, and tomatoes, potatoes, heroes. As for most of the words that end up with o, we just add s, except for tomatoes, potatoes, and heroes. A very small group. We add es. So these are the very common rules. So when we use countable nouns, we should pay attention to their forms and change them into plural forms if necessary. Then let's look at some examples about uncountable nouns. Let's look at the sentences. There is some pork in the fridge. Would you like some orange juice? Rice is very important for us. As for the three words, pork, juice, rice, they are uncountable. So we can see that first, we cannot use a or n before these nouns, right? And second, if an uncountable noun is used as a subject, and the verbs following them should also be in their single forms. Number three. We can use some words to describe the number of them. For example, look at the picture. It's a a cup of tea, a cup of tea. Good. And here is a piece of bread. Yes, a piece of bread. And there's another group of words. 
which can be used as both countable nouns and uncountable nouns. Let's look at some examples. He is running around like a headless chicken. And would you like some chicken? There are three cabbages in the kitchen. And there is no cabbage in the soup. Chicken and cabbage can be used as both countable nouns, like a chicken and three cabbages, right? And they can also be used as uncountable nouns, such as some chicken or no cabbage, right? 在第一个句子中呢，这个 chicken 是表示鸡，像一只无头的鸡一样到处乱窜。我们中文是这样说的，像无头苍蝇一样。到处乱窜。在第二个句子中 ，Would you like some chicken？ 是指的你喜欢吃一些鸡肉吗？第三个句子中 ，There are three cabbages in the kitchen。这个 cabbage 是指的三个卷白菜。The last sentence, there is no cabbage in the soup， 指的是汤里面没有卷心白菜。And there are more such words like salad, ice cream, cake. And etc. Now let's open our books and turn to page fifty-seven. Look at grammar focus. Here are some nouns. Please read after me. First, countable nouns. Read after me, please. Balls, balls. Apples, apples. Carrots, carrots. Oranges, oranges. Strawberries, strawberries. And uncountable nouns. Beef, beef. Meat. Meat, milk, milk, mutton, mutton, water, water. Both countable and uncountable. Chicken, salad, ice cream, cabbage, cake. Okay, can you give more examples? You can pause and add more words to the groups. Here are some examples. Bananas, potatoes, tomatoes, eggs, noodles. Fish and coffee can be used as countable nouns, as well as uncountable nouns. And pork, time, tea, are uncountable. Now, please take some time to read the sentences in Grammar Focus on page fifty-seven, and then. Finish some tasks. Now, please pause and read. Okay, now please translate the sentences into English. You can pause and write them down. Let's check the answers. What kind of noodles would you like? I'd like beef noodles, please. What size would you like? I'd like a medium bowl, please. And now pause and translate these sentences into English. Have you finished? Let's check. Would you like a large bowl? Yes, please. Is there any meat in the tomato and egg soup? No, there isn't any. Or no, there's no meat. Now let's see. In these sentences, would like equals to want. Would you like means, do you want something? Okay. Please try to fill in the blanks. 你想要点什么 ？Yes. What would you like? 我想要一杯茶。I'd like a cup of tea. 你想要一些牛奶吗 ？Would you like some milk? 是的，谢谢，或者不，谢谢。We should use different expressions here. Yes, please. No, thanks.
and let's learn more about would like. Would you like to do means do you want to do something? We could answer this question like this. Yes, I'd like to. Oh, sorry, I have to. Oh, I'd love to, but I have to. For example, 你愿意和我们一起去划船吗 Would you like to go boating with us? 好想去啊，但是我现在必须待在家里。You can speak or write down the answer. Yes, I'd love to. But I have to stay at home today. Let's do more practice. I want an apple equals to I would like an apple. He wants to go home equals to He would like to go home. Mary wants me to help her equals to Yes. Mary would like me to help her. So let's summarize. Would like equals to want. For example, would like something means want something, and would like to do something means want to do something. Now let's look at the last two sentences in grammar focus. Is there any meat in the tomato and egg soup? No, there isn't any. No, there's no meat. Here is the there be structure. There be 句型主要表示这儿有那儿有这个意思。那么在用这个句型的时候，我们要特别注意 be 动词它是单数还是复数，取决于紧跟它后面的那个名词是单数还是复数。如果它是可数名词的复数的话，我们就要用 there are。如果是可数名词的单数或者是不可数名词，那么我们就要用 there is。Now let's have some practice and fun. Please open our books and turn to page sixty. Look at self-check. Exercise two. Please complete the sentences with the correct forms of their be structure. You can pause and do the task. Okay. Do you think these sentences are very funny? Yeah. Interesting conversations between customers and waiters, right? So now let's check. Excuse me, there is a fly in my porridge. The waiter says, "Don't worry, sir. That spider on your bread will soon get him." 顾客说呀，我的粥里面有一只苍蝇。这个服务员就说，别着急，先生。你面包上的那个蜘蛛马上就要抓住它了。Number two, there are two flies in my fish soup. The waiter says, "I know, but we are short of fish." Conversation three, the customer says, "We ordered mutton noodles, but there isn't any mutton in the noodles." The waiter answers. Put on your glasses, and you can see the mutton. Funny, isn't it? Okay, now let's move to Sam and Annie. Let's look at some sentences. Are there any vegetables in the beef soup? Yes, there are some tomatoes. No, there aren't any vegetables. Is there any meat in the tomato and egg soup? Yes, there is some meat in the soup. No. There isn't any. No, there's no meat. There are some apples in the basket. There isn't any milk in the bottle. Is there any green tea in the cup? Now please pause and try to summarize the usage of some and any, especially the differences between them. Okay. Now you can pause and try to analyze these sentences. And draw a conclusion. Now let's see. Rule number one: some and any 能够用在可数名词和不可数名词前。比如说 ，any vegetables 
可数名词的复数 some tomatoes, any vegetables, right? And some apples. 这些都是用在可数名词的复数前面。We can also see that any meat, some meat, any milk, and any green tea. 它们同样也可以用在不可数名词的前面。这是 rule number one. Rule number two. Some 多用于肯定句，而 any 多用于否定句。比如说，我们用 Are there 这个疑问句，我们用的是 any 啊、uh, ，Yes, there are。我们用的是 some。No, they aren't。我们又用了 any， right？ 但是有一个特殊情况 ，some 在某种情况下也可以用于疑问句，表示期望得到肯定的回答。比如说。Would you like some orange juice? Or can I have some water? In these two sentences, you are expecting others to say yes. Now let's do some practice. Please turn back to page fifty-seven. Look at three A. Complete the conversation below. You can pause and do the task. Now let's check the answers together. Please read after me. May I have your order? I'd like some noodles, please. What kind of noodles would you like? What kind of noodles do you have? We have beef, chicken, mutton, cabbage, potato, tomato, and etc. Are there any vegetables in the mutton noodles? Yes, there are some carrots. Okay, I'd like the mutton noodles then. Sure. What size would you like? What size do you have? We have large, medium, and small bowls. Oh, a medium bowl, please. So we can see that when we are ordering food, we can actually ask some questions about the food, right? So that we can make a good choice. Okay, let's do more practice. Please look at three B. Write questions and answers using the words in brackets. You can pause. And write. Finish right. Okay, good. Please read after me. What kind of noodles would you like? I'd like chicken and beef noodles with tomatoes. What size would you like? I'd like a medium bowl, please. Is there any cabbage in the beef noodles? No, there isn't any. Okay, let's summarize what we have learned in this class. In this class, we have learned different groups of nouns, such as countable nouns, uncountable nouns, and both. And we also learned how to use their be, any, and some correctly. Besides, we get to know that actually, as a customer, we can ask some questions about the specific details of some food. So that we can make better choices when we order food. Okay, hope this class will help you to order the food you really like. Now let's see your homework. First, make conversations in three C with your classmates through WeChat. And second, finish the exercise on the worksheet and check the answers. Thank you for listening. Hello, girls and boys. Welcome to the third period of Unit Ten. I'd like some noodles. Section B, one A to one D. In this class, we will learn about more food and learn to order takeaway food. Hopefully, by the end of this class, you will be able to take down important information about ordering food by phone. And make more complicated conversations about ordering food. Before the class, let's review what we have learned in the first two periods, and try to put what we have learned into practice. Well, in the first two periods, we have learned some conversations in restaurants. Now, 
Please open your books and turn to page sixty. Let's do the third exercise in self-check. Please write a conversation with the help of the clues. As for the waiter, you should ask for the order, and ask for the size of the order. And as for the customer, you should ask about what is in the food, and thank the waiter. You can pause, and write down a conversation. Okay, the answers may be varied, and here's one possible version. Please read after me. May I take your order, please? Are there any vegetables in the egg rice? Yes, there are some tomatoes. Okay, can we have two bowls of egg rice then? Sure. What size would you like? Large, please. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Next time, when you go to a restaurant, you can use what you learn to order food, right? Exciting, isn't it? Well, do you like to eat in the restaurant? Some may say yes. Some may say no. But do you like parties? I think the answer will be yes, since the most young people like parties, because it's a great chance for us to get together with our friends, have fun, and enjoy a variety of foods. So, if you are in a party, what kind of food would you like? Would you prefer Chinese food or Western food? Would you like a bite of China? Look at the pictures. These are very common Chinese food. Let's learn about how to say them in English. Please read after me. Steamed buns, steamed buns. Fried rice with egg, fried rice with egg. Mapo tofu, mapo tofu. Wontons, wontons. Noodles, noodles. Pancakes, pancakes. Rice noodles, rice noodles. Roast duck, roast duck. Hot pot, hot pot. Dumplings, dumplings. Gumbao chicken, gumbao chicken. Then. What about a bite of America? Can you recognize this food? Please read after me. Chips, chips, fried chicken, fried chicken, hamburgers, hamburgers, hot dogs, hot dogs, sandwiches, sandwiches, ice cream, ice cream, and a bite of the West. Here, this kind of beef is called steak, and usually we always eat the steak with other food, such as, please read after me, onions, onions, eggs, eggs, broccoli, broccoli, carrots, carrots, green peppers, green peppers, macaroni. Macaroni. Now let's play a guessing game. Please look at the picture and tell me what food it is. What's this? Yes, it's a bowl of soup. Yes, read after me. Soup, soup. What's this? Yeah, it's fish, fish. What's this? Green tea, green tea. And what about this? Yeah, meat, meat, all kinds of meat. Here are pancakes, pancakes. Good. 
porridge, porridge. And this is orange juice, orange juice. And here are onions, onions. What about this? Yes, dumplings, dumplings. Well done. Now let's get back to the party. Open your books and turn to page fifty-eight. Look at the picture in one A. The children are having a party, aren't they? The table is set. The plates are ready. So it's time for the meal. Look at the dishes. Can you figure out what kinds of food are offered in the party? Please match the words with the pictures. You can pause and do the task. Now let's check the answers. Meat goes to B. Dumplings G. Porridge. A, green tea, H, orange juice, C, soup, Y, e, onions, I, fish, D, pancakes, F. Okay, now let's say the names of the food one by one. From the left to the right, please say after me. Porridge, porridge. Meat, meat. Orange juice, orange juice. Fish, fish. Soup, soup. Pancakes, pancakes. Dumplings, dumplings. Green tea, green tea. Onions, onions. So, would you like to go to the party? What food would you like in the party? Please circle the things you like in one A. Put an X next to the things you don't like. Then talk about what you like and don't like and why. I will show you some examples. You can say like this: I like dumplings and soup, but I don't like meat. Really, I like fish. Porridge and pancakes, but I don't like onions. Or maybe you can say a little more about your food preferences. For example, you can tell us the reasons why you like something or don't like something. For example, you can say like this: I like orange juice and soup. I think they are healthy, but I don't like green tea. Because it tastes kind of bitter, or like this. Well, I like porridge and fish because they are not only delicious but also nutritious. But I don't like orange juice, although it's rich in vitamins. It tastes a little too sour. Now, please read after me. I like orange juice and soup. I think they are healthy, but I don't like green tea. Because it tastes kind of bitter. Well, I like porridge and fish because they are not only delicious but also nutritious. But I don't like orange juice, although it's rich in vitamins. It tastes a little too sour. Now you can pause and read the sentences, and then talk about your own preferences. Now pause and practice. Although everyone has different preferences towards different food, and we may like different kinds of things, still here is the truth about food. And this is a suggestion for me, from moms, and from doctors. To keep healthy, we should stick to a balanced diet. So every day, we'd better take a bit, maybe two, of the stuff we dislike. Yes, please keep this in mind. To keep healthy. We should stick to a balanced diet. So every day, we'd better take a bit, maybe two, of the stuff we dislike.
Well, as the party goes on, they are in need of more food, so someone is making a call to order some food. Now, look at one C. Listen and complete the food order form. Section B, Activity One C. Listen and complete the food order form. Hello, House of Dumplings. Hello. I want to order some food, please. Sure. I'd like chicken, fish, and cabbage, please. Uh huh. And twelve dumplings. What kind of dumplings would you like? Beef and carrot dumplings, please. Okay. What else? Um, I'd like some soup too. Okay. What kind of soup would you like? Tomato soup. Okay, one tomato soup then. Would you like any drinks? One large green tea and two small orange juices. Okay, what's your address, please? Fifteen North Street. And what's your telephone number? Three nine eight two eight four five. Three nine eight two eight four five. Yep. Thank you. That'll be sixty-five yuan. Now let's listen to it again and check your answers in one C. Section B, Activity One D. Listen again. Check your answers in one C. Hello, House of Dumplings. Hello. I want to order some food, please. Sure. I'd like chicken, fish, and cabbage, please. Uh huh. And twelve dumplings. What kind of dumplings would you like? Beef and carrot dumplings, please. Okay. What else? Um, I'd like some soup too. Okay. What kind of soup would you like? Tomato soup. Okay. One tomato soup then. Would you like any drinks? One large green tea and two small orange juices. Okay. What's your address, please? Fifteen North Street. And what's your telephone number? Three nine eight two eight four five. Three nine eight two eight four five. Yep. Thank you. That'll be sixty-five yuan. Now, let's check the answers and get through the order form together. The address. Fifteen North Street. It tells us where the food should be delivered to. And telephone number is three nine eight two eight four five. As for the dishes, they order chicken, fish, and cabbage. They also order some dumplings. To be specific, they order twelve beef and carrot dumplings. Besides, they also order one tomato soup, and in addition, they order one large green tea and two small orange juices. From the order form, we know exactly what specific foods the customer orders, and we also know where the food should be delivered to. And what number should we call when we want to contact the customer, right? And here are two more questions for you. First, what's the name of the restaurant? Second, how much should the customer pay? You can pause and answer these questions. Well, the name of the restaurant is House of Dumplings, and the customer should pay. Sixty-five yuan. Now let's watch a video. Here's someone ordering food from a Western restaurant. Let's watch and complete the order form. Hello, this is Pizza Express. What would you like? I'd like a pizza, please. Do you have any specials? Yeah, we do. What would you like on it? Green peppers. Onions, 
tomatoes, and cheese. What size would you like? I'd like a medium pizza. Anything else? Oh no, that's enough. So what's your address? Forty-six West Lake Road. What's your phone number? Eight eight two one five two one zero. We'll deliver your pizza in thirty minutes. Let's watch it again and check the order form. Hello, this is Pizza Express. What would you like? I'd like a pizza, please. Do you have any specials? Yeah, we do. What would you like on it? Green peppers, onions, tomatoes, and cheese. What size would you like? I'd like a medium pizza. Anything else? Oh no, that's enough. So, what's your address? Forty-six West Lake Road. What's your phone number? Eight eight two one five two one zero. We'll deliver your pizza in thirty minutes. Let's check the answers. What's the address? Forty-six West Lake Road. What's the customer's telephone number? Double eight two one five two one ten. And what does the customer order? She orders a medium size of pizza with green peppers, onions, tomatoes, and cheese. Have you got all the answers correct? It's important to take down the detailed information of the order so that the restaurant can prepare the right dishes and deliver them to the customers in time. Now, let's summarize and review what we have learned in this class. We have got to know more names of food and some useful expressions to order food by phone. For example, here are some useful expressions for the customers to use. When ordering takeaway food, please read after me. I want to order some. I'd like. Do you have any specials? What specials do you have? Are there any? How much is it? How long will it take? And here are some useful expressions for the waiter. Or waitress to deal with the order. Read after me. What would you like? Would you like any? We have four. Anything else? What's your address, please? What's your telephone number, please? That'll be dollars or yuan. We will deliver your food in, for example, about thirty minutes. As we all know, because of the coronavirus, we have been staying at home for nearly two months now. It's very tiring for our mom to cook for us every day. So maybe you can take a chance to order some food by phone, so that your mom can take a break. And I hope what we have learned today can offer some help when you want to order food by phone. You can have a try. Now let's look at our homework. First, try to order some food from a restaurant by phone. Use the expressions we learned today. Second, finish the exercise on the worksheet and check the answers. Thank you for listening. Hello, girls and boys. Nice to be with you in the first period of Unit Ten. I'd like some noodles. In this class, we're going to do some reading about a special kind of food around the world. By the end of this class, I hope you will be able to apply some reading strategies to help you read faster and deeper. 
and introduce some birthday foods around the world. Let's look at two pictures. What do you think of when you see them? Yes, these pictures remind us of birthdays. Why? Because there are birthday cakes and candles. What are they doing? We can see that both of them are sitting in front of a birthday cake, and in the first picture, the boy keeps his eyes closed. Yes, obviously he's making a wish. And in the second picture, the girl is trying to blow out the candles on the birthday cake. Yes, blow out the candles. These are the typical things we do on our birthday. Please read after me. Make a wish. Make a wish. Blow out the candles. Blow out the candles. Well, what do you do on your birthday? Yes, we usually have a birthday party. Sometimes, we go outdoors and、uh, have a picnic. And some people will choose to get together with their friends, and share some delicious food like a pizza. As for young children, what they like best is to go to zoo or an amusement park. For most of us, I think. We usually have a big meal with our families on such a special day. So, what do you eat on your birthday? Do you eat a birthday cake? Do you eat noodles? What about eggs? Yes, these are very popular birthday foods we have nowadays. Can you share with us what you do or eat on your birthday? You can pause and talk about it. Okay, let's see how the following persons celebrate their birthday. You can read after me. I usually have a birthday party. My friends come to my party. We have a great time. The boy says. I have a big birthday cake and a lot of gifts. The girl says, "My father usually buys me some new clothes, and my mom usually makes a big dinner for me." Does your mom make a big dinner for your birthday? Then, for this girl, she says, "I usually have a birthday cake, make a wish, and blow out the candles." And her friend says, "I usually eat noodles and eggs for my birthday. They give me good luck." You must be very familiar with the things they do and the food they eat on their birthdays, right? Well, do you want to know what people like to eat on their birthdays in other countries? Now let's read about it. Please open your books. And turn to page fifty-nine. Look at the picture and the title in two B. Can you predict what is talked about in the passage? The title says, "Birthday food around the world." And in the picture, the girl is blowing out candles on a birthday cake. So this passage must be focused on what people eat on their birthday. In different countries. Now, please skim the passage and check your prediction. Skimming means read very fast through the passage, maybe at four or five times faster than your normal speed. You can pause and skim the passage. You are so swift. Let's read the first paragraph. What would people like to eat on their birthday? The answer would be different in different countries. These sentences in the first paragraph introduce the topic of this passage, and by skimming through the whole passage, we get to know that the second and third paragraphs talk about birthday food in many countries, in the UK, 
and in China. And the last paragraph is the conclusion of the topic. It goes. All of these birthday foods may be different, but the ideas are the same. They bring good luck to the birthday person. So, by skimming, we are pretty sure about the main idea of this passage, and its main structure. This helps us to understand the passage much faster and better. Then, please look at two B on page fifty-nine. We have to find specific information to fill in the blanks. Then, how should we do this first to find some detailed information? We better use the strategy of scanning. It means we bear in mind what we are looking for and go through the whole passage very quickly, like a scanner. We only slow down when we come across the information we are searching for. So let's look at the blanks. To make sure what we are looking for. Yes, the birthday foods in the UK and China and their special meanings are our targets. So we slow down and read carefully when we locate these words. Now you can pause and try to apply this strategy. Go through the passage very quickly and find the answers. Please pause and do the task. Now let's check the answers. From the second paragraph, we know that in the UK, people usually eat birthday cakes with candles, and the special meaning is that if she or he blows out all the candles in one go, the wish will come true. And sometimes, people in the UK put a candy in the birthday cake. The special meaning is that the child with the candy is lucky, or you can also say it's lucky to find the candy in a cake. From the third paragraph, we get to know that in China, people usually eat long noodles for their birthday, because long noodles are a symbol of long life. And in some places, people also eat eggs on their birthday. Because eggs are a symbol of life and good luck. Have you learned how to find the information quickly now? Yes. Remember to use the strategy of scanning and locating. Now let's move on. Please read the passage again and answer the questions. This time, you should read through the passage carefully for more details. Let's go through the questions first. Number one, how can a person make his or her birthday wish come true? Number two, what do people in the UK sometimes put in the birthday cake? Number three, why do people never cut up birthday noodles in China? Number four, why do people eat special foods on birthday? Now you can pause. Read again and write down your answers. Well done, you're really swift. Let's check the answers. First, how can a person make his or her birthday wish come true? He or she can blow out all of the candles in one go. Number two. What do people in the UK sometimes put in a birthday cake? They sometimes put a candy in a birthday cake. Number three, why do people never cut up birthday noodles in China? Because long noodles mean long life. Question four, why do people eat special foods on birthday? Yes, they eat special foods for good luck. Have you got all the answers correct? Yes, excellent. Now let's listen and read aloud after the record. Pay attention to the pauses between groups of words. Section B. 
Activity 2B. Read the article about food traditions and complete the chart. Birthday food around the world. What would people like to eat on their birthday? The answer would be different in different countries. In many countries, people have birthday cakes with candles. The number of candles is the person's age. The birthday person must make a wish and blow out the candles. If he or she blows out all the candles in one go, the wish will come true. In the UK, people sometimes put a candy in a birthday cake. The child with the candy is lucky. In China, it is getting popular to have cake on your birthday, but many people still eat very long noodles for their birthday. They never cut up the noodles because the long noodles are a symbol of long life. In some places. Chinese people also eat eggs on their birthday. They are a symbol of life and good luck. All of these birthday foods may be different, but the ideas are the same. They bring good luck to the birthday person. Now let's read more about the traditional birthday food around the world. Please read after me. Australia. Birthdays are often celebrated by sharing a decorated birthday cake with lit candles, which the person celebrating the birthday blows out while making a wish. So we get to know, in Australia, people celebrate their birthday with a decorated birthday cake and candles, and they also blow out the candles while making a wish, just like most people do in the UK. Ghana, the child's birthday breakfast is a fried patty made from mashed sweet potato and eggs. Traditional birthday party fare includes a dish made from fried plantain. Plantain is a kind of banana. In Western Russia, the birthday boy or girl is given a fruit pie instead of a cake. So we know in Ghana. A child has a fried patty, and a dish made from a particular kind of banana. In Western Russia, the children don't have a cake; instead, they will enjoy a fruit pie on their birthday. Korea, for their first birthday, the child is dressed and set before a range of objects, including fruit, rice. Calligraphy brushes and money. Whichever item the child picks up predicts their future. For example, picking up the rice indicates material wealth. After this ceremony, the guests eat rice cakes. So in Korea, they have a very interesting and special ceremony for their first birthday. They get dressed up. And have a special picking up ceremony to predict their future. Actually, we Chinese have the same tradition. We call that zha zhou, and Koreans eat rice cakes instead of normal birthday cakes. Brazil, birthday children receive candies shaped like fruits and vegetables. A pull on their earlobe is good luck for the coming year. Japan, the birthday boy or girl is given an entirely new set of clothes. Germany, candles are lit in the morning, and burn all the way to the evening. In Brazil, children often receive candies shaped like fruits and vegetables, and they will also receive a pole on their earlobe. It's a symbol of good luck for the coming year. As for Japanese, they usually get a new set of clothes. As for Germans, they light up the candles in the morning and have them burning through the day. 
All these birthday celebrations may be different, but the ideas are the same. They bring good luck to the birthday person. Now let's review the important expressions in the passage. You can pause and write down their English on your notebook. Now let's check your answers. Please read after me. 一次性 In one go, in one go, 给某人带来好运 Bring good luck to somebody. Bring good luck to somebody. 长寿的象征 A symbol of long life. A symbol of long life. 切碎 Cut up, cut up. 想做 Would like to, would like to. 什么的数量 The number of, the number of. 吹灭 Blow out, blow out. 生命和好运的象征 A symbol of life and good luck. A symbol of life and good luck. 许愿 Make a wish, make a wish. 实现成真 Come true, come true. Let's do some practice. Please complete the sentences according to the Chinese. You can pause and write down the answers. Now let's check the answers. First, I would like to go swimming this weekend. Two, he made a wish. Under the tree. Number three. The number of the students in our class is forty-nine. You can pause and write down the answers first. Now let's check. I hope it can bring good luck to you. Number five. Turtles are a symbol of long life. Good. Now let's put what we have learned into practice. Please report about birthday foods around the world. Use the knowledge and expressions learned in this class. You can pause and report. Well, how time flies! In this class, we have learned some reading strategies such as predicting, skimming, scanning, and locating. I hope these strategies can help you to become more efficient at reading. And we've also learned about different food traditions for birthday around the world. Hope this can help you to understand birthday celebrations better, and. Best wishes for your birthday celebrations in the years to come. Here is your homework. First, write a report about the birthday foods in at least five different countries. Second, finish the exercise on the worksheet and check the answers. Thank you for listening. Hi, boys and girls. Welcome to the last period of Unit Ten. I'd like some noodles. In this class, we will focus on writing. Hopefully, by the end of this class, you will be able to design a menu and write an advertisement for your imagined or favorite restaurant. To reach this goal, we have to get prepared. With food-related words and sentences. Apart from that, we also need to know the structure and features of a good advertisement. We will get through all this before we start to write the article. So first, 
Let's get prepared with food-related words, and think about what kind of food your restaurant will offer. Of course, our favorite food will be included in the menu. So, what kind of food do you like? Please read after me. Fish, fish. Mapo tofu, mapo tofu. Soup, soup. Steak. Steak, pizza, pizza, cake, cake, steamed buns, steamed buns, or we can also call them steamed bread, steamed bread, fried rice with egg, fried rice with egg, noodles, noodles, porridge, porridge. Wontons, wontons. Pancakes, pancakes. Rice noodles, rice noodles. Roast duck, roast duck. Hot pot, hot pot. Dumplings, dumplings. Gumbao chicken, gumbao chicken. Chips, chips. Fried chicken, fried chicken, hamburgers, hamburgers, hot dogs, hot dogs, sandwiches, sandwiches, ice cream, ice cream. What kind of meat would you like? Beef, beef, pork, pork, mutton. Mutton, fish, fish, chicken, chicken. What kind of vegetables would you like? Tomatoes, tomatoes, cabbage, cabbage, carrots, carrots, potatoes, potatoes, onions, onions, chilies, chilies. What about the fruits? Apples, apples, bananas, bananas, pears, pears, oranges, oranges, strawberries, strawberries. And we also need to offer some drinks, right? So, what kind of drinks do you like? Please read after me. Coffee, coffee, milk. Milk, orange juice, orange juice, Coke, Coke, green tea, green tea, black tea, black tea, apple juice, apple juice, soy milk, soy milk. Now, please open your book and turn to page sixty. Look at self-check. Exercise one. Please put the words you learned in different groups. Now please pause and do the task. Are you good at doing this? Now let's read the words. As for meat, there is beef, beef, chicken, chicken, mutton, mutton, pork. Pork, fish, fish, and for vegetables, carrot, carrot, tomato, tomato, onion, onion, pepper, pepper, potato, potato, cabbage, cabbage. Fruit includes orange, orange, strawberry, strawberry, apple, apple. Pear, pear, banana, banana, and we have drinks like milk, milk, coffee, coffee, green tea, green tea, orange juice, orange juice, water, water, soy milk, soy milk, apple juice, apple juice. Besides, we can also offer other food like. 
cake, cake, pancake, pancake, dumpling, dumpling, porridge, porridge, noodles, noodles, pizza, pizza, rice, rice. Then think about this question: Where would you like to eat? Would you like to eat in a steakhouse? A steakhouse is a Western restaurant, which mainly offers steaks. Would you like to eat in the Pizza Hut? Pizza Hut, or what about a dumpling house? A dumpling house. Now read after me: Steakhouse, Steakhouse, Pizza Hut, Pizza Hut, Dumpling House. Dumpling house. What about the ice cream and pancake house? Now look at three A. Please fill in the blanks in the advertisement with the words in the box. You can pause and finish the task. So after reading this, would you like to eat something in the ice cream and pancake house? Now let's check the answers. Please read the passage with me. Would you like to eat ice cream or pancakes? At our restaurant, we have some great specials. We have different kinds of fruit ice cream, like strawberry, banana, or orange. Would you like a big bowl for four yuan or a small bowl for just two yuan? You can also order our delicious pancakes. They are only five yuan. What kind of writing is it? Yes, very obviously, it's an advertisement of the ice cream and pancake house. Then, what are the necessary elements of an ad? Let's go through the ad together, so we can see we should have a very clear title to tell the customers what kind of restaurant we are, and then we should tell the customers what are supplied in our restaurant. And to attract the customers, we'd better introduce some of our specials. And their reasonable and appealing prices. For example, from this advertisement, we know that they offer some great specials. They have different kinds of fruit ice cream at great prices, and their pancakes are not only delicious but also at a very attractive price. Let's summarize how to write an ad. In the advertisement. We should have a, an attractive title. Tell the customers what are supplied, and represent our special strengths, such as reasonable prices and special dishes. And besides, we'd better tell the customers how to contact the restaurant or how to order food. So, what expressions can be used to present this information? We can use "Welcome to," "Would you like to," or "You can enjoy." And when introducing the specials in our restaurant, we can tell the customers about the kinds, the sizes, and the prices of the food. And we can use these sentences: "We have small, medium." Large, to describe the sizes. About the prices, we can use low price or at a very good price. Then, at last, we'd better tell the customers our address or telephone number. We can use these sentence structures. Our address or telephone number is. You can contact us at. 
You can pause to understand the structure of an ad and try to memorize these expressions. Now, let's look at 3B. Imagine you have a restaurant and now you are going to make your own menu. Please write down the foods and their prices. You can pause and write. Actually, I'm really curious about what you have written down, and I believe that your menu can be very different from others, since every one of us has different tastes and personal preferences for some kind of food. Well, anyway, here's my version. Yeah, it's a very common restaurant named Lucky Fast Food Restaurant. And here's the menu. We have beef and carrot soup for only 6 yuan a medium bowl. Mutton and tomato soup is only 7 yuan a medium bowl. Cabbage and pork noodles are only 8 yuan a large bowl. Dumplings are 10 yuan for 20. And we also have tomato and egg rice. It's only 4 yuan for a small bowl. Yes, all the food are at very good prices, right? Would you like to eat in my restaurant? Then what about your menu? Since the menu is ready, it's time to move to 3C. Please write an ad for your restaurant. These sentence structures may help you. Please read after me and try to memorize them. Welcome to, welcome to, would you like, would you like. You can enjoy all kinds of food here. You can enjoy all kinds of food here. They're all at very good prices. They're all at very good prices. We have four, we have four. The is only yuan, the is only yuan. You can try our, you can try our, it's very good, it's very good, they are very delicious, they are very delicious. Our address is, our address is, come and enjoy them, come and enjoy them. Now you can pause, you can pause and try to memorize these sentence structures and then Write down an ad for your restaurant. Please pause and do the task. Good job! You have finished right? I really believe that you have a very special restaurant and you have composed a very attractive advertisement for it. How I wish I could have a look at it and enjoy some food in your restaurant. Here's one possible version. Please read after me. Welcome to Lucky Fast Food Restaurant. Would you like some soup? We have beef and carrot soup for only 6 yuan a medium bowl. We have mutton and tomato soup for 7 yuan a medium bowl. Our cabbage meat noodles are 8 yuan a large bowl. You can try our dumplings. They are 10 yuan for 20. The tomato and egg rice is really delicious. And it's only 4 yuan for a small bowl. Come and enjoy some food. This is a very simple advertisement. And here's another possible version. Can you guess what kind of restaurant it is? Yeah, it's a noodle house. Okay, please read after me. Welcome to noodle house. Do you like noodles? At noodle house, we have many different kinds of noodles and they are all good. We open from half past six in the morning 
to half past ten at night. Nude House has some great specials. Special A has beef and tomato noodles and costs only 18 yuan. Special B has modern and cabbage noodles. It costs 20 yuan. And Special C comes with chicken and carrot noodles. It's 16 yuan. Special C is our most popular one. You can get some other great food at Noodle House too. For example, you can get 12 dumplings for 20 yuan. We also have strawberry, banana and chocolate ice cream. They are all delicious. Come to Noodle House soon and taste our food. If you want to know more about Noodle House, visit our website at www.noodlehouse.com or call us at 8669-3321. Now you can pause and read these articles again and pick up some good expressions. Well, how time flies. In the past 30 minutes, we had some very special experience. And we pictured a restaurant for ourselves. Maybe in the future, this imaginary restaurant will come true. And I'm sure you must have had a very clear idea about how to make a menu and how to write an appealing advertisement for your restaurant. Hope this will be of some help when you need it. Now let's recall and summarize the lesson. In this class, we have learned how to sort food into groups and make a menu. Besides, we've also learned how to write a good advertisement for a restaurant, which includes an attractive title, supplies, strengths, and ways to contact the restaurant. And here is your homework. Polish your advertisement after class and finish the exercises on the worksheet. Thank you for watching.